Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here finally back with more of the F1 2020 McLaren driver career mode where today we're here back ready for round 11 of season 2. Yes we've reached the halfway stage of the second year of this world championship you know a big big thank you for the continued support on the channel over the recent weeks. Now obviously of course the Daytona 24 is finished yeah we, we had an interesting mixed run uh, in that race but happy that we were able to make it to the checkered flag. Yeah, we're back, obviously, once again with more Formula 1 content. Obviously, this week we're going to have all sorts of stuff from my team and, obviously, the McLaren RTG and, obviously, F2 rounding out the weekend as always as well. But, yeah, obviously, if you're going to enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed. We're trying to hit 14,000 subs at the moment. So, if you could help us get one step closer to that, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. But, obviously, if you missed out on the last video uh, from the French Grand Prix, definitely, definitely won. Uh, that I'd recommend going back and checking out as well. Of course, there will be spoilers in 3, 2, 1 now. So, after leaving the French Grand Prix last time round, we have a new race winner in this season. The name of Daniel Ricciardo for Renault. Yes, Renault, their home Grand Prix, they really did somehow pull it out of the bag in the end there. And we're currently on a four-second place finish streak in a row. It's given us a 24-point lead in the Drivers World Championship after our teammate Lando Norris faced his second DNF of the World Championship. But yeah, four second places in a row. Can we finally get our first win on the board since the Dutch Grand Prix? We've only had two wins all season long so far. Only time will tell as we head into the Austrian GP this time round. But championship-wise, though, as you can see, Lewis Hamilton only seven points behind our teammate there. Bottas now starting to pull away just a little bit from Sergio Perez, and that win for Danny Rick has really leapfrogged him all the way up the order there into sixth place there. Constructors-wise, we're still 62 clear at the front. Things are looking good as there's a big, big battle going on uh, for third place overall between Racing Point, Renault, Red Bull and Ferrari. But yeah, let's dive in then here for this weekend's race. Ready? From the Styrian Mountains, it's time for the Austrian Grand Prix. Well, here we are then qualifying day for the Austrian Grand Prix and it is looking very very soggy out there on this Austrian GP circuit. We're going to take a bit of a gamble and try and stick with pretty much a fully dry setup ready for this one. We're going to up the front wing by one, see how we get on and then we'll probably lower it again ready for the race. But yeah, this qualifying session is going to be very very difficult to try and get a lap hooked up around this very very short track. But pace felt really good in free practice so we'll wait and see as to how this goes as we head down in towards the first corner then ready to start our qualifying session just being a little bit cautious through the first corner I want to make sure I'll... Ooh, a lot of wheel spin despite being in fifth gear there on the exit of turn one as we head up the hill Daniel Ricciardo last time out race winner are we seeing just a complete resurgence of form from Renault at the moment have they finally found something that's clicked with their car as we try to put on the power at the top of the hill there you can just see the back end sneaking around as we try to put the power down on the exit of the corner there. Down the hill in towards the next corner. Very, very easy just to run very, very deep through there. Just can't seem to scrub off the speed. As again, even more wheel spin. Just, I think we're fairly close to the crossover between the Inters and the Full Wets at the moment. Just now Sergio Perez looking very, very quick as we head down in towards the final sector. That's a more familiar face to see at the front of the field. Our teammate Lando Norris as we try to nurse the car. In towards the final couple of corners. It hasn't been a bad lap so far. As we head down two more corners to navigate. Really using all the curb. As we head in towards the final corner. Getting an even more wheel spin up towards the line. Now where is it going to be? It's P2 on the grid there. Very, very close between Lando and myself. With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Norris, Mr. Monaco and Sergio Perez. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. 15 thousandths of a second between myself and Lando Norris at the end of qualifying there. Sergio Perez well, did a fantastic job as well as Daniel Ricciardo to both lock out the second row there. What is happening to Mercedes over recent weeks? A lot of team have caught them up. And they just don't seem to have what it takes to really uh, fight right at the very front over the last couple of races there. Bottas down in fifth ahead of Verstappen and Ocon there with Hamilton down in eighth place. Just ahead of both the Ferraris rounding out the top ten there. Albon again not having a good qualifying session down in 11th. The same can be said for Stroll in 12th. And obviously got both Alpha Towers, the Haas, the Alphas and the Williams 
rounding out your field there. But yeah, 15 thousands between Lando and I ready for this Grand Prix. This is going to be a spicy one. Can we finally get our first one on the board since Anvil? Let's do this thing. Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship, except the very first back in 1964. It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the 10 corners of this high-speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left-hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and will start from pole position. And Mr. Monaco completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Ricardo, Valtteri Bottas, and Verstappen, Ocon, Hamilton, Vettel, and Charles Leclerc, Albon, Stroll, Daniel Kvyat, and Gasly, Magnussen, Raikkonen, George Russell, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Latifi, and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Here we are then, ready on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix. Round 11 of the season here, and we've reached the halfway stage of this world championship now obviously with qualifying yesterday being uh wet even i should say we can go for an alternate strategy this weekend i'm probably not going to do so but the option is there if we wanted to I, I just thought i'd point that out as well i ready for this race but obviously this one should suit the choir quite well again obviously very very much power orientated circuit we might try and just see how far we can take those soft tires early on and then go mediums to the end of the Grand Prix here. But trying to get ahead of Lando early on is probably going to be key as well. But let's dive into the then round 11 of the World Championship here from the beautiful Austrian Grand Prix circuit. A McLaren front row lockout once more. Finally, the red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. Lando responding a whole lot better to lights there. But both of us getting a pretty decent start down in towards the first corner. I notice Perez having a sneak up the inside. We run a bit deep through the corner, but we do hold on to P2 there off the start of this Austrian Grand Prix. As we head up the hill, though, that racing point is a rocket ship down the straights there. Can't quite get close enough to look for anything. Surprised we didn't get another attempted dive bomb from the Mexican there. As Bottas tries to get a little bit closer as he makes up round on the Renault of Daniel Ricciardo. There, yellow flags out only momentarily as there was a bit of Constantino now at the rear of the field. But Lando Norris, our teammate, has had an absolute worldly of a start there. One and a half seconds clear. As we head down the hill here, obviously famously the track that gifted him his first ever Formula 1 podium in the real life 2020 season. But let's just see if we can try and just get our head down, focus on trying to close up the gap to our teammate. As we head down in towards the final couple of corners here, Lando absolutely flying at the start of this Grand Prix. Obviously he has got a point to prove this weekend after the penalties last time around after bagging pole and then obviously the unfortunate DNF around the halfway stage of that Grand Prix. 1.7 clear. At the end of lap one, Lando is on a mission. End of lap two. Let's just do a quick lap comparison. We do take a few tenths at a Lando race. Norris there as we go into the 103s already in this race. So clearly Lando and I'm really trying to apply a lot of pressure at the moment. Romp away from the guys behind. Again, we just have a bit of a clear-cut advantage at the front of the field at the moment. So if we can try to pull away, that would probably be quite good from a team's perspective. Really just trying to see if we can get the car into the DRS window. I think we have now just been able to there as we were hovering just over the second mark at the start of the lap. There we go. We have now got some DRS on our teammate Lando Norris. There is Perez and Bottas squabbling behind us. Is going to help us further extend the margin at the front. Bottas might be the only man that can give us any sort of a run for our money this weekend in these all-conquering McLarens. But we'll wait and see. I think Bottas has just about made the move. No, as soon as I say that. Swapping around behind us there in towards the next corner. I think now, yeah, Bottas okay, has solidified P3. Perez, not too sure what's happened to him. He's really dropped down the order 
as we head on to lap five there. He's gone behind now both of the Renaults of Ocon and Ricardo there, as Ocon's clearly had a good start, straight up into fourth place in this Grand Prix, and starting to apply a little bit of pressure to Valtteri Bottas. At the moment, I'm a bit more worried about what we're doing at the front of the field, as the gap to Lando really coming down quite rapidly at the moment, but we just got to try and apply the pressure. Don't want to go for any risky moves, it's a long old way to go in this World Championship, and at the end of the day, I'm sure the team won their first Constructors World Championship since the 90s, remember? It really has been a long time waiting for McLaren, and it is looking like their biggest opportunity in, yeah, quite a while. Oh, yellow flags out in Sector 2. I wonder who's got issues. I think it is one of the Red Bulls. I'm going to guess it's Max Verstappen. No, it must be Albon falling to the wayside in this Grand Prix there, so not what Red Bull need. And what has already been a very, very tough and testing season so far, Albon out of the Austrian Grand Prix. Luckily, though, no safety car, which doesn't cost Lando and I are already five-second margin. Pretty trying to apply a lot of pressure now to Lando Norris as we head up the hill. He gives us a big old squeeze onto the curbing there and just sits on the apex at the top of the hill. A tiny bit of contact between us, but that won't cost either of us all too much in this race. I'd love to get ahead of him. Before the pit stop window there is all Lando. I thought about it. I did think about going for a send, but I'm not as confident on the brakes through there like I am up the hill in comparison to the AI. But this year almost giving me sort of 2014 Bahrain vibes from Mercedes, where we're battling it out at the front of the field and still pulling away from the cars behind us. Oh, don't do that. We do not want to do that in this Grand Prix. So yeah, we're getting close to the pit stop window though. Intrigued to see when Lando is going to come in. I don't really want to go for an undercut here. I always find that trying to go a couple of laps longer can generally be quite rewarding. Another good run on Lando Norris as we head up the hill. Once again, have a look to the outside. And again, Lando will just play it defensively at the top of the hill. Does give us a bit of a squeeze as we try to... Well, I mean, if we put the power down on the curbing, we we'll probably wouldn't stand much of a chance of being pointing in the right direction still. But Lando, again... Just going to cover us off. Oh, gets a little bit of a weird line through the next corner. But again, just about holds on. When is our teammate going to pit? I wonder if he's going to come in at the end of this one. And then we'll come in the end of the next lap here. But yeah, so far, the first half of this Grand Prix has been just qualifying lap after qualifying lap. It's felt like both of us pushing to the absolute limits there. Is this Lando Norris going to dive into the pits? No, he doesn't. Lando opting to out another lap here in at this Grand Prix, and like I said, I don't want to undercut him, but surely if he stays out much more, as we run way too right out in the final corner, yeah, surely there's not going to be much we can do, as Bottas behind us comes in, the first of the front runners to blink. As that was almost us out of this Grand Prix. The car behind is dropping back by about three tenths a lap. If Lando doesn't pit now, we're going to have to come in in this Grand Prix. Is Lando yet? Of course. As soon as I say that, Lando Norris dives into the pit lane there. So around the outside of me, we'll finally re-inherit the lead of this Grand Prix. We now need an absolute worldly of an in-lap here if we want to try and get the overcut on our team out. I don't think he's going to get stuck in much traffic at all. I think a lot of guys have already made their pit stops here. As yeah, everyone seems to have gone a long old way into this Grand Prix. One of the Ferraris of Charles Leclerc is going to have to stay out for an extra lap here, but I think it is just the pair of us at the front of the field. As we actually go green through the first sector. That's what I like to see. That's exactly what we need at this stage of the Grand Prix. And look at that Lando. He's actually going to come out of the pit lane just behind Charles Leclerc on a set of hard compound tyres. What on earth have the team done to Lando Norris's strategy? Do they believe the hards are the way to go? Do they just not have any faith in the mediums? Very, very confused by that. But as we head down the hill, this could be critical in this Grand Prix. If Lando gets stuck behind Charles Leclerc, through the second half of the lap. The Ferrari isn't too slow, but it's certainly not as quick as our McLaren here. So we're going to have to come into the pit lane at the end of this lap. Very careful not to. Well, we just run a little bit over the white line, but that's okay on the way in. Nice and tidy on the pit lane entry. Don't need any penalties, thank you, like we did last time. We just about hold on to it as we head down in towards the pit lane here. Where is our teammate Lando Norris going to re-emerge in this Grand Prix? Doesn't get held up too badly by the looks of it from Charles Leclerc behind him. But Lando Norris at the final corner he comes. This is going to be incredibly close as we head back out onto the racetrack here. Can we try and get a nice tidy run out of the first corner? Very, very careful as we try to put the power down. But I think we've just about done it. We have got ahead of our teammate Lando Norris. 
in this Austrian Grand Prix there. So the perfect little under uh, overcut, even, I should say, in this race. And now with some fresher, quicker tyres, for whatever reason, the team lobbing him on the hearts, hopefully now we can romp away towards the end of this race. There we go, 103.7. As we head on to lap 15 of this Grand Prix, Lando Norris now over, well, nearly four seconds behind us after the pit window there. So again, no idea what the team have done for poor Lando's strategy, but he will definitely feel like this is a race that he deserved to have win the last couple in a row. He probably feels that way at the moment. But yeah, four laps to go here from Austria. As long as we don't do anything stupid, this one is looking good. Like it's finally going to go our way. On to the final lap then of this Austrian Grand Prix. And what a race. This one has been the car has felt like an absolute dream to drive as well there, which always thinks makes things more fun on F1 2020. It's pretty much been 18 qualifying style laps around this Austrian Grand Prix circuit after obviously we didn't have to put any wear through the tyres in qualifying. It really has just allowed us to stretch our legs all day long and you can see how quick we've been because in a 25% race we're going to be close to lapping George Russell in his Williams at the end of this one. As well, they're down in towards the final few corners, though. It's been a long time coming, our third win of the season. But we've been so consistent in pretty much all the races so far. I know we had a couple of blips early on in the World Championship. But, you know, Lando's been unlucky with a couple of DNFs as well. That have thrown him, thrown him a little way off the championship battle as well. There. George Russell's going to let us by in towards the final couple of corners here. But down in towards the final couple of turns... It is going to be another McLaren race victory at the end of the day here. Through the final corner, it's the win in the Austrian Grand Prix and 26 points on the board. Great drive. We did it. Good job. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here at Austria and a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. So, let's review the driver's standings. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? It's got to be Lando Norris, hasn't it? Smooth, confident and assured. I've got no doubt that he and his team are going to be over the moon with his performance today. Let's move on to the constructors. McLaren continue to increase their gap at the top. Meanwhile, Renault move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, I'm not too sure what race Anthony Davidson has just watched, but there is no way Lando Norris is going to be happy with that race result in the end. Then nine seconds, yeah, really doesn't paint the full picture of just how good the first stint in that Grand Prix was at the end of the day there. But it is another win on the board there. I think that's our fifth fastest lap in a row. In Grand Prix as well, over one lap pace in a race, we can really seem to extract a little bit more out of the car than anyone else there. But yeah, second to the fastest lap and the race victory, 26 points on the board. A race in under 20 minutes as well is always quick on F1 2020 standards as well. But Lando Norris, P2 ahead of Valtteri Bottas there, who, yeah, I mean, it was only McLaren's that got a look in this weekend. You know, the likes of Mercedes, Racing Point, Red Bull and Ferrari uh, really do need to, and Renault, of course, do really need to up their game if they want to try and be battling for race of victories week in, week out there. But yeah, Perez in fourth ahead of Ocon, Max Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo. They're dropping down the order quite rapidly in that Grand Prix. They're ahead of Vettel and Hamilton just seemingly having no impact whatsoever over the course of that race. They're eighth to ninth in the end. They're very, very quiet showing 
from the multiple world champion there. Danny Kvyat in 10th place ahead of Charles Leclerc there. You can see Gasly, Stroll, and then you've got all the Haas at Alphas and Williams there. With just Albon not making it to the end of Red Bull's home Grand Prix. They're a gutting way for those guys to finish this weekend there. And yeah, well, like I said, has been an incredibly tough season so far for the Milton Keynes based squad there. But championship wise though, the gap opens up to 32 points at the top of the World Championship there. That is exactly what we knew. We've now got a one race margin. We can afford to let something go wrong. I don't want it to happen, but we can afford to let something go wrong at some point this season as well. The Hamilton and Bottas both being so inconsistent as well as really let them both down there. 55 and 66 points back respectively now, just ahead of Sergio Perez there, who is the only other driver over the 100 point mark there. Daniel Ricciardo still in sixth, just ahead of Max Verstappen there. Charles Leclerc still eighth there, and Ocon gets the jump on Vettel, Pierre Gasly and Albon up inside the top 10 there. Just, yeah, Alexander Albon, 12th place in that rebel. Not quite what he wanted, I'm sure, early on this World Championship there. I think probably the biggest disappointment in comparison to their teammate, though, has to be Lance Stroll. 21 points uh, to Sergio Perez is 108. He is really letting that team down as a while there. But constructors-wise, though, the gap opens up 89 points now. we got two perfect weekends margin over Mercedes as we head into the second half of the World Championship there. Racing points still in third place there, just ahead of Renault. Red Bull and Ferrari there as Alfa Tauri get another point on the board. Very much in no man's land in 7th place there. Like we seem to find those guys in real life 2020 as well there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, like I said, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we will be back very, very soon ready for rank, uh, rank 12, sorry, I should say, of the season. We head to our home Grand Prix, the team's home Grand Prix as well. It's going to be a good one. It's time for the British Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.